personal view is that the best way forward for care is to think about taking experts in Kelman, HHKS, and pairing them with experts in living with you all, because you really understand what's most important, and that's something that we can. So Kalman syndrome is a condition that has a genetic basis, okay? That doesn't necessarily mean that you inherited it from uh, your parents, right? Sometimes genetic conditions start spontaneously. But um, what happens is in the, there's a reproductive system in your body, okay? And I'm going to draw a little kind of picture here. call this the reproductive axis. These are parts of, of the hormonal control of puberty and reproduction in your body. And in the middle of your brain, there's this area called the hypothalamus. And they have these very special GnRH neurons. And those neurons produce little pulses of hormones. Okay? So it's not constant, like stepping on a gas pedal and holding it down. It's like this. Little pulses. And every time there's a pulse that goes, comes from these specialized uh, neurons, it goes to the pituitary gland, which is, you can think of like the master secreting gland in your body. And the anterior pituitary, the front part of this, produces hormones. So this is gonadotropin releasing hormone, which causes the release of the gonadotropins. And the gonadotropins are two things, LH and FSH. And the pituitary releases those in the bloodstream. And there, you can think of them as like little keys circulate through your whole body. And when they hit to your gonads, in women, ovaries, and in male testes, that key fits in a lock and turns it on. Okay? And then we have things like sex steroids. That's like testosterone and estradiol in women. Okay? That causes you to have the outward signs of going through puberty, so developing your body, um, Females develop breasts, you develop body hair, uh, your voice changes as a male. All of those outward signs of puberty, those are determined by these sex steroids. The other part is fertility. So in men, that sperm development, and then in females, you have this little development of a follicle and then ovulation. So this whole system controls puberty and your reproduction. So HHKS is a rare condition that's GnRH deficiency. So you just missed that top step. Everything else is pretty intact. But people with uh, Kalman syndrome miss this, are missing this top step. So they have low gonadotropins and low sex steroids. Okay. So that's a long way of saying that's what physically happens with Kalman syndrome. So what does that look like? Well, people don't go through puberty right, spontaneously. And um, sometimes it's not diagnosed till quite late. Right? So all of you who have been diagnosed with HH or KS know this because maybe you had a feeling that something wasn't quite right. Um, but maybe your pediatrician or your doctor said, oh, you're just a late bloomer. Right? You're going to go through puberty on your own. And that's because you think about the whole population, most people go through puberty in this kind of time frame, right? So from like 12 to 14. And then there are some people who are out here who go through like, that was like me. I, w I had a late puberty. I didn't go through puberty at the same time as all my peers. But people with Kalman syndrome are way out there. They won't go through puberty because they lift, lack this switch. Okay? Everything else is there. And the great news about HH and KS is we've got really good treatments. Okay? We can replace these hormones and make you appear as though your puberty was normal. So you can make a male, you can have facial hair, uh, you can deepen your voice, develop muscles. If you're a female, you have a feminine curve, you can develop breasts, all of those things. So we can so you walk down the street and no one would know that there's a problem with that. We have very good treatments. We also have very good treatments for fertility. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have a family. The hard part is that um, sometimes it's an odyssey to get a diagnosis. And it takes a long time, and you feel like 
something's not quite right and people aren't listening to me or maybe sometimes people tell you you have a disease or a condition that you don't really have, you can misdiagnose. And that really, when people tell me things that aren't true, it makes me not trust them. So what questions do you have about this or kind of the, anyone have questions about